Hey guys, welcome back to Rule the World. Last episode, we dealt with that horrific tax collector that I think Lord Blackwood probably sent. He only sent two knights, though, and one tax collector. I, I guess he didn't expect me to put up any kind of fight, so I'm kind of lucky. The green knight, Chloe Brightsword, even though she has an axe, I know, but sometimes fantasy characters have weird names. Uh, Lady Agalmar, and of course, Therin, who's now an okay shot. Theron OK shot, proved themselves in battle and did a great job against those evil foes. We've got a bit of a gap before I think Lord Blackwood's gonna, gonna respond to us collect, killing his tax collector. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our infrastructure and we're gonna get back to building some of the cooler things from Ancient Warfare. And one of the big things that I've wanted to do ever since I've seen Ancient Warfare as a mod is build a windmill. So today we're gonna be building up a nice big windmill and we're gonna use it to power our animal farms. What I want to do as well is get like a fish farm and probably a, a wood farm as well, like a, like, a, like a quarry for trees. I think we're going to need that. But also we've got so much wheat stocked up in the storehouse that I want to get a bakery and a food station going that will automatically turn all of the wheat into bread for us that we can feed to our workers and our troops. So let's jump in and get busy making a windmill. Man, so yeah, what an epic battle that was last time. Actually, it wasn't really that epic because honestly, the tax collector, he died kind of quick. Lady Agalmar was great, but honestly, I think it was Chloe Brightsword who did the most damage with her menacing axe. Even though she's a medic, she got pretty much all the kills except Theron OK Shot, who's been upgraded to an OK Shot. Maybe if he keeps working hard, we can upgrade him to Theron Good Shot, maybe Theron Great Shot, and then I think the final promotion will be Theron True Shot. Now I've taken them off their horses because they don't really know what they're doing on them. They get suffocated more often than not and they're just a bit, bit of a menace. But we can keep the horses here just in case we need them in future to travel great distances. Right, so let's take a look at what's been going on in the kingdom while you guys have been away. I've got this nice platform here that I built last time, but I haven't put any archers on it yet. There's not really much point. Uh, when I do get some archers, I'll put them on here. And I'm a bit worried about Lord Blackwood. He could he could arrive any day now with a massive army because I mean we, we really messed him up. We really took out his tax collector. So we, I, I'm actually thinking about it. That guy probably had some gold on him. I should have stuck around to see if he dropped any. Right, so let's take a look at the at, at the, uh, at the at the list of things to do. Now we definitely are going to be need, need to work on windmill. It says to power the quarries, but I'm not sure we need to power the quarries because honestly, Simon's doing a great job. But what we do need it for, I think, since we've taken out Hannah and Lewis from our farmers, we can probably make them troops instead, or even set them to work on the fishery and the and the lumberjack place to make wood. And what we can do is we can use the windmill to power our farms. I put um, I put the sheep, the cows, the pigs, and the chickens back in here because I've got the, the whole system back up and running. And now that uh, Chloe Brightsword is locked up in the barracks, she doesn't try and come over here to try and heal the chickens anymore, which is great news. Now Martin's all configured up and working at A-OK. -okay. The AI's a bit buggy, but eventually it starts to work. And I think Benji, where is he? Where is, where's Benjism gone? Benjism should be going backwards and forwards, filling up his pack and delivering things from the quarry. So let's see how Honeyji's been doing down here at his hole. Oh yeah, things are getting pretty deep down here. Oh, and it looks like Benji's doing his job emptying this quarry of all its items. So where is Benji actually? If he's doing his job, he's not doing it very quickly. Ah, there he is. He's making the run, grabbing all the items from the farms. Oh, it looks like the cows have dropped something, or the pigs, or the chickens maybe. Oh, and here he comes. He's going to drop off his stuff into the warehouse. Good job, Benji. And Trot's still working hard. Oh, looks like I dropped some Sakura planks over here before. Now, I did come over here beforehand and uh, and build a windmill and some windmill blades. But I'm going to show you guys how they work. I need, first up, to get some more sticks, though, because I need a few more windmill blades. So I'm going to grab my axe and go and secure myself some more wood. Now, I really do need to get a tree farm working because wood is such a useful, such a useful, useful um, material to have, but I just don't seem to be able to gather enough of it to keep up with my demands here at the kingdom, especially considering all the buildings that I'm making. So I definitely need a nice big tree farm so that I can get some lumberjacks on the case and start making a huge amount of buildings out of the wood that I chopped down. But not only that, I need a lot of wood to make this windmill. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna grab the windmill blades where are they? W it should be quite late. There we go. Windmill blades. I've got 39 of them. And the windmill controller. I'm going to show you how you, how you craft these because they are quite 
tricky to make. You've got to use the engineering table because it's an ancient warfare thing. And it's literally just a sterling... Uh, where is it? A windmill controller is just literally two wooden gears. And then the windmill blade is four wool and five sticks. But that's per windmill windmill block. And you need a lot of them to make a whole windmill blade. Luckily, though, I've got the sticks to be able to make the gears. Problemo. We need one more, actually, so I'll just turn that into planks. And this should work again for our second gear. There we go. And we're going to need a whole bunch of sticks and wool to make some more blades. Now I've gathered up some more oak wood. Let's just turn that into planks and the birch, too. Here we go. We can turn this into sticks. Problemo. And now let's mix it up with the wool to make some more windmill blades. Here we go. And this is just how you make a windmill blade. Now, I had to do some research, but it was pretty easy to get there, and I did that quite a few episodes ago, actually, because I was going to do windmills a long time ago. All right, 47 windmill blades. That's enough probably to make our first windmill, plus some extras. In fact, I'm going to get some even more windmill blades, because why not? There we go. And that's about all I can make so far. I've got some more sticks. I could make a lot more, but this is all I'm going to need. I won't need any more than 52. Pretty sure about that. So I've got a windmill controller and a windmill blade. Let's go and... When did I put the other... Did I make two controllers? No, I didn't. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two controllers because I win, will need another windmill later on. And I'll just keep it here in the engineering station. Oh, yeah. Pretty exciting. Everything's going pretty well on the farm. The water wheel is spinning and turning the crop farm superbly. Martin's doing the rounds, collecting up all the food and depositing it, depositing it to the town hall and to the animal farms. Doing a great job there. Benji's job is to pick up all of the produce from the animal farms, drop it off in the warehouse, and to pick up the stuff from Honeydew, old Simon over there, and drop it off in the warehouse as well. Everybody's doing their jobs. I'm doing the farm over there. I should be somewhere over there. Is that my shoulder sticking out? I think it might be. Oh yeah, there I am, just working hard on the potatoes and the carrots. And Hannah and Lewis are bottled up for the time being in the warehouse just as just as their repacked blueprints because we don't need that many farmers right now so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into build mode straight away and start building a windmill right here that's going to look really amazing we're going to plug it down and we're going to have a nice place to put our big windmill blade so let's do it okay so i got a pretty good idea in my head of how i wanted the windmill to be traditionally when i've built windmills before they've always had a thick circular layer at the bottom that gets thinner as you go up. And that's a great idea, but the problem with these windmills that I'm gonna be building is that they need a big flat surface. So what I'm gonna do for that is have the front of the windmill structure be flat, but the rest of it can be peaked and rounded a bit. Now I wanted to use a mix of dark oak wood here with dark oak logs and some stone brick around the bottom as well. I just about had enough room to fit in here, right next to the archery platform, and in between the farm as well. I was thinking about moving it closer to the barn, but I thought it'd be really cool to incorporate it into the archery platform design. Now, I wanted to switch from stone brick to cobblestone when I got halfway, and so I used cobblestone up, but I kept with the dark oak wooden log framework. Right, now I wanted to start creating the peaked roof out of this lighter kind of wooden stairway material. But I came back, and let me show you the finished roof. I came back and I changed that for an oak wood effect. I think it's a nicer, a nicer shade of wood to keep as the roofs. And when you look at the rest of the town, it's very much kind of becoming a kind of darker, traditional, more, more lighter, darker, browny kind of rooftop feel. The birch was just a little bit too yellow. I also had to have, because like I said, that the windmill needs to lean out from, the actual windmill blade needs to lean out from the structure itself. So I built a little platform out the front out of these wooden stairs and out of the cobblestone that I can lean the controller out on front of so that it kind of just leans out over the farm and doesn't hit anything when the blades go around. Because let's face it, if this windmill blade is too close to the path, then poor old Benji is going to lose his head or an arm or something when he tries to walk past to deliver his goodies. Right, well, I'm about done with the windmill, so let's take a look inside. Oh, yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. Now, I tried to incorporate it into the archery kind of pavilion that we've got over here. And it looks pretty good. I think it's worked pretty well. We can have some archers up here defending the windmill, but the windmill's have structure attached to it. Right, now I've just got to go in here. And, oh no, I haven't put down the ladders yet. So I'm going to have to go and get some ladders to put the windmill up top. 
but it's going to look really good. I'm going to I'm going to show you a cool way to work out how to build a perfect square as well, because we're going to, we're going to need to do that when we uh, when we build our windmill. But we can't make smaller squares and then keep making them bigger because if we do that, then um, it will build a smaller windmill and we won't be able to build a big one. As soon as there's a square that can be a windmill, it will turn into a windmill and then we're stuck. Right, so I'll take some Sakura planks out and make some ladders with those. There we go, 48 should be plenty. Right, let's put these ladders down and the windmill controller. Right, so up we go, there's room for two ladders and I've put them over here at the back of where the windmill's supposed to go. There we go. And I might just do the other side as well because why not? Keep it looking symmetrical and neat. There's also plenty of torches in here, so it's really easy to kind of see what you're doing and no monsters are gonna spawn inside here. It's pretty important. Right, so up here is where the windmill is going to go. Oh yeah, look out at the kingdom. Isn't this a great view? Well, pretty soon it won't be a very good view because we're going to put down the windmill controller. So let's do it. We want the windmill blades and the windmill controller. So let's, uh, let's plunk the, the controller down first. Now it's facing the right way. But we're going to have to go around the front to put down the windmill, control the windmill blades. Right, so I'll need some scaffold and uh, oak wood should do perfectly. So I'll just nerd pole my way up here. Right, so when you put down these blocks, they'll become just normal blocks like this. Now this is a windmill blade apparently, but as soon as this becomes a square, it'll turn into a windmill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a U-shape around the windmill like this. If I show you what I mean. We're gonna just start building up like one, two, three, four, five. Now if I dig away, where's my ax gone? If I dig away this piece of wood. Now if I put down a windmill blade here and here, look it's not a windmill, but the second I put one right there, it'll become a windmill. Let me show you. Okay, no, well, maybe that's not the minimum size. Let me make it one bigger to see if that works. And now one layer down here. This should be the final layer. Now will this become a windmill? Let's see. Bam! Yeah, look, you can see it's become a windmill, but look, that's not the kind of windmill that we want. Oh my god, though, that looks amazing, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's not, it doesn't quite look like a proper windmill, but that does look really impressive. What I want to do now, though, is actually flesh out this windmill and get it to be a bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is, I can dig out one of the windmill blocks, and the second I do, it stops being a windmill. So what we're going to do is, we're going to leave this little notch here, and we're going to go around the rest of the windmill and just complete it. Right, so I've done one more layer, but there's two notches here, so if I fill these in, it should become a bigger windmill. Blam! There you go, and you can see it's starting to get a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is we're going to clock wipe forwards, I'm going to go to the warehouse, make myself some more windmill blades, come back here, and make the biggest possible windmill we can actually manage. So, let's do it! Right, now here it is! Whoa, what a beast! This is, I think, pretty much the biggest windmill that you can get. Now, if memory serves, you can get a 17 by 17 windmill. Uh, I think this is a bit shorter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sevens, two sevens are 14, 15. This is a 15 by 15 windmill. So we could go one bigger, and we might in future, but the second I put this block down, we're gonna create a massive windmill. So are you ready, guys? Here we go. Bam! Oh, whoa, look at that beast turn! Oh, this looks amazing. I'm really happy with that windmill. It looks pretty fantastic. What I might do is make some more windmill blades because I just ran out of it and ran out of them. If I make one more level, one more layer around that windmill, we can have an even bigger windmill. Oh yeah, and let's just watch the camera sweep in and get a sweet view of the windmill in action. Oh yeah, so here it is, the finished windmill. Doesn't it look really amazing? Look at it spin there in the background. Oh, hey, there's the camera weaving up. Hey, how's it going? You can see Benji there in the background working hard. He isn't even he isn't even distracted by how impressive this windmill is at all, because he's seen them before. He's an ancient warfare veteran. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching Rule the World. This episode, we nailed the windmill. Next episode, what I'll probably do is hook it up with some of those torque shafts so that it can actually power our farms. But also, what I want to do is get a fish farm on the go so we can feed our guys with fish. But also, I want to get a lumberjack farm up so that we can get some Canadian lumberjacks in. I can't think of anyone better than Sips to be our lumberjack as well because he's a true Canadian. And we can get some renewable source of wood on the go as well. So, until next time, guys. This has been Rule the World. Hit like and favorite and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.